This video is brought to you by Card Kingdom. And while supplies last, if you mention Saffron Olive in your order notes, we'll hook you up with a free Saffron Olive sticker with any Card Kingdom order. Hello, everyone. It's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. And it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And this week, it's really ultra budget magic. We are playing one of the cheapest Pioneer decks that I think can be at least somewhat competitive. That is Mono White Sram Auras. This deck is 46 bucks in paper. You don't get any cheaper than that. That is our normal ultra budget price. 12 ticks on Magic Online. So about as cheap as you can get for a deck that can be really explosive, really sweet, and actually pretty fun. So a quick reminder before we break down Mono White Ultra Budget SRAM Auras for Pioneer. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Budget Magic in general, it would be amazing of you. If you take a second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Mono White SRAM Auras, starting with our namesake card, SRAM Senior Edificer. So SRAM is basically our engine card. Two mana, two, two. Whenever we cast an aura, an equipment, or a vehicle spell, we get to draw a card. So SRAM, while it's not great on its own, own, it can potentially draw us a ton of cards because we have a bunch of auras and even some equipment in our deck. So SRAM is kind of the engine that keeps us churning through our deck, finding more action, finding more threats. As far as what we're actually trying to put our auras and equipment on, we can put them on SRAM if we need to. Like, we have some really powerful auras that can make any creature into a threat, but some of our best options include Laguna Band Trailblazer, which thanks to Heroic gets even bigger as we target it with stuff, gets a plus one, plus one counter, and four toughness means a lot of red decks in specific can't really kill it easily, so it just gets massive, smashes our opponent's face. Adanto Vanguard, on the other hand, has a form of protection, and that's very important to this deck, because in Pioneer, we don't really have totem armor, auras, we don't really have uh, indestructible threats for the most part that are cheap enough to use in a deck like this, so Adanto Vanguard, being able to pay for life to make it indestructible, is actually nice, because it fizzles fatal pushes and wild slashes, gives us a resilient threat that we feel at least somewhat safe throwing all of our auras on, survives wrath even, so best creature to load up with our auras in matchups where there's wrath and other hard removal. Then we have some really kind of cheaty cards, Nixport Shieldbait, Hopeful Eidolon, Eidolon of Countless battles. These creatures, well, creatures slash auras, uh, do double duty at our deck. We can't just cast them if we desperately need something to throw our more powerful enchantments and equipment on. Uh, a 1-2 for 1 isn't that bad. A 1-1 one, one lifelink for 1 isn't that bad. Idolite of Catalyst battles actually gets really big. However, these are also all auras, so in the mid game, we can bestow them onto one of our other creatures, like our Adanto Vanguard, make it bigger, trigger SROM, do all that stuff. It's also key to note here that all of these creatures are enchantments, which is going to come into play when we talk about some of our big finishing auras. Idolite of Catalyst battles is really sweet. It is often a huge creature, and for 4 mana, we can bestow it on another creature, which kind of gives it haste. We can put it on like an Adanto Vanguard and get a massive hit because it gets plus one plus one for each aura and each creature we control. So basically our entire deck is giving it plus one plus one. We put it on a creature. If that creature dies, then Eidolon becomes a creature itself, which is nice as well because that's how Bestow works. It's an aura that turns into a creature where the original creature leaves the battlefield. So these are kind of our creature slash auras. As far as auras themselves, our main plan are things that give our creature plus one plus one for each enchantment we control. Uh, ethereal Armor, All That Glitters, Helmet the gods these cards are actually very strong in our deck because as you can see even our creatures are technically enchantments all of our enchantments are obviously enchantments so basically most of the stuff we have on the battlefield outside of lands is pumping these so what we really want to do is play like an adanto vanguard or even a hopeful idol on whatever random creature and just load them up with ethereal armors all that glitters helm of the gods make it into a 10 power creature a 20 power creature and use it to smash our opponent's face and close out the game so these are the main ways of closing out the game and and thanks to the redundancy for Ethereal Armors, for All That Glitters, for Helm of the Gods, it's very easy to grow a creature into massive, massive size. The last important piece of our aura plan is Griff's Boon. And Griff's Boon is key because it gives the enchanted creature flying. And if you notice, all of our big payoffs, Ethereal Armor, All That Glimmers, Helm, they make our creature huge, but they don't make it evasive. So there's a risk that our opponent can just chump block, chump block, chump block, eventually find removal or something to 
to ruin our day? Well, Griff's Moon just comes down, goes on whatever our biggest creature is, sends it to the air to smash in for a hopefully lethal attack in like one or two turns, and it can even come back from the graveyard if our first creature rides. Not something that happens a ton, but being able to come back from our graveyard for four mana is a nice upside if our opponent manages to deal with our first threat. We also have Cartouche of Solidarity, which is basically Edict Protection. One of the ways our opponent can kill a huge Odonto Vanguard, let's say, is using Angrass Rampage or some other sort of Edict effect. Cartouche gives us a little boost, plus one, plus one, and First Strike is fine. It's an aura, so it triggers SROM, it grows our all the glimmers and all that stuff, but it also makes this 1-1, one, one, which is perfect for sacrificing to an Edict effect. Otherwise, Banishing Light, God's Willing, kind of round out our deck. Banishing Light, a little bit of removal. It's an enchantment, so it works with all of our payoffs. God's Willing, a little bit more protection if our opponent has targeted removal. Mana base wise, Castle Arden Vale and a bunch of planes. Castle Arden Vale. Mostly just a free roll in the deck since we have so many planes. In the late game, can start making 1-1s one a way to rebuild if our opponent can deal with our plan. Sideboard-wise, couple more creatures. Apostle Purifying Light does two things. It's our graveyard hate if we run into some sort of like reanimator-style strategy. And if we run into a deck like Mono Black, it's an absurd creature to put all of our auras on. Because protection for black means our opponent just can't do anything. They can't block it. They can't kill it. So in black-based removal matchups or Mono Black aggro matchups, it's our best creature along with being graveyard hate. Hushbringer shuts down Enter the Battlefield triggers doesn't hurt us at all gives us a nice life linker with evasion to put our auras on silk wrap pithing needle disenchant our removal package god's willing for a bit more protection and that is mono white sram auras ultra budget mono white sram auras for pioneer and that's our budget magic deck for this week so let's jump into the gameplay see if we can smash some face with sram and auras and some indestructible creatures and tons of random weird bestow creatures as we prepare for our return to theros in another month or so thank you so much for watch it i hope you enjoy the gameplay and i will talk to you soon all right budget magic time we are playing some ultra budget mono white sram boggles in pioneer and yeah that's a land we have enough stuff to trigger sram so let's just hopeful idol on go opponent desert well we're gonna play sram go with the upside play i mean if we get to untap with sram we should get to draw like three cards next turn hit our opponent down to 19 no red mana, no red mana. Scavenger Grounds, okay. And this is Pilgrimage. So opponent's getting their ramp on, so the challenge is on us to kill our opponent before they start casting, like, Eldrazi. Uh, Ethereal Armor's help. Ethereal Armor on Eidolon, draw a card. Land, please. That's a land. And Ethereal Armor on Eidolon, draw a card. Um, Helm of the Gods, draw a card. Attack, and I mean, I think we just have lethal next turn? We don't have lethal through uh, blockers, unless we draw something that gives flying. So if our opponent can hour a promise, all right, there's hour a promise. Well, we'll see. If our opponent can get to something like Ulamog, we lose. We would love to draw into, yeah, we would love to draw into something that gives flying, which I guess is Griff Spoon. Well, Helm of the Gods, draw a card. Banishing Light does not quite do it. Play a land, bestow shield mate draw a land attack opponent blocks we pass the turn we're at 38 but that does not beat an ulamog or an ugin either one opponent getting in all right so this means ulamog is coming for sh almost for sure Ugh. are we gonna just get raced by ramp here that's disappointing eight mana that looks like ugin mana to me ugin there goes our board oh my goodness and we were gonna draw it too oh banishing light get Ugin for now. Nyxborn shield mate. Helm. Go. Oh! If this came one turn earlier we win. One turn too late with a Griff Spoon. Alright, what do you got opponent? Oh, that was a brutal wrath. Even gets rid of our bestow creature. Opponent. Something huge. Oblivion Sower. Oh, we don't play many lands. Yup. No lands. Although, those are cards we wouldn't mind at drawing. Oh, bless! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so done. We're so done. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, we can't... I don't think we can beat this. Play a land. Griff Spoon. Because our opponent, now they can Blast Zone. I mean, go to combat attack for eight, but this... Yeah. Get in, hit ya. Opponent Blast Zones kills everything. Oh, boy. Huh. I don't know if this is a bad matchup or not. I know Ugin is very good against us, and Blast Zone is also very good against us. I feel like we have to get a a faster start than we got. Our Promise, more zombies, more lands. 
Now I'm wondering if there's even like any point in continuing. Well, we'll see what we draw. Hopeful Eidolon. There's another blast zone. All right. Yeah, let's uh let's just concede. I don't think there's yes, we're at 31 there at 12, but there's just no way we're going to get through this uh stack of blast zones. Blast zone is very very solid against us. We're going to bring in our two pithing needles and go down our two cartouches. So we can pithing needle blast zone or ugin. And I think we mostly just we mostly just need a fast start, I think. I think that's basically, like, how this works. Ponent's Mono Green, their Wraths don't come down to, like, 8 or 10 mana, other than Blast Zone, which is an issue. But their Wraths don't come down until late in the game. So if we can get a, a decently fast start, especially on the play, we should be able to kill our opponent. Like, even that game that we lost, if we had drawn Griff's Boon uh, off of our SRAM, one card, if it was one card higher in our library, we would have won that game. So even with uh, with how bad that ended up looking, we were actually, like, super close to winning that game rather than losing it. Like, super, super close. Downside is, being mono green, our opponent probably has lots of artifact and enchantment removal on their sideboard. Because what else, what else do you got if you're playing mono green? Well, all right, we'll keep this. Sadly, it's not necessarily as fast as we'd like. We'll see. Opponent, colorless land passes. Well, we will play... Adanto Vanguard, pass the turn. Forest for our opponent, and passes. Well, Castle Ardenvale, play Sram, play Griffsboo, get in for four. Oh, all right. Well, I'm glad we played, I'm glad we played a Griffsboon and not Ethereal Armor, all that glitters. Castle Garenbrig, opponent, passing. Well, let's throw some damage on the battlefield. Land, uh, all that glitters. Ethereal Armor, Griff Spoon, go to combat, attack for 12. All right, opponent, you need something pretty good here on turn four. And that's more like how we want this to go against Mono Greed. Like, opponent had a, did have one artifact enchantment removal spell, but we were still able to get the job done. That's the kind of game we need, is those fast starts where we just close out the game so quickly that our opponent can't actually, can't actually stabilize. Because if they can get to eight mana, they're going to win almost guaranteed every time so we have to try to kill them before they they get to eight mana that is that is how this matchup works all right uh okay well we're gonna keep this go go adanto vanguard save us helm of the gods so if this adanto vanguard lives it will be a fast clock of it we have a million all the glitters oh all right sram well we drew a sram we can't pass up a sram pass the turn put it forest you got ramp there's the ramp. All right, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. This is definitely sketchy. Opponent has their ideal curve. Well, let's all that glitters. Draw a card. Not a land. Uh-oh. Combat, get in. Ooh, opponent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you got? Elvish Rejuvenator. Gonna hit a land. How much damage can we deal this turn? Oh, we need to hit a land. Opponent plays a forest. Passes. We draw. Shield mate. Ethereal armor. Draw a card. Show us a land. All right, there's a land. Uh, Griff's Boon, Helm of the, Helm of the Gods, 13 you, is that enough? Opponent goes to three, come on, come on, no answers. Opponent plays a land, seven mana, could be World Breaker, World Breaker would be very good for our opponent. Do we get it? Do we get it? Can't play Ugin yet, a mana short of Ugin. Oh, come on, come on, come on, tell us we got it. Opponent tapping mana, they do have World Breaker, oh, uh, okay. So the problem here isn't World Breaker. The problem here is this potentially buys our opponent enough time to play Ugin next turn, and then we lose. Opponent snags a Helm of the Gods. They definitely have Ugin in hand. Gets in. Opponent passes. Hmm. How can we do this? Let's bestow a shield, mate. Pithing Needle. Go to combat. Attack. Oh, wow. This doesn't beat Ugin, though. Oh, no Ugin? We have hope. Land. So no Pony did not have the land for the Ugin. And the scoops it up! Whoo! Bullet dodge! Bullet dodge! Just barely! Wow! With our opponent exiling the Helm of the Gods, the one thing that survives Ugin, it seems pretty clear that they had Ugin in hand, but they missed their land drop. And we were able to steal it. And I mean, that is that is one of the upsides of this Alter Budget Srob deck is if our opponent stumbles even a little bit, we are in a position to punish them. I mean, this was uh, 
we had like a turn what four ish kill minus the blockers uh very close to it at least definitely turn five kill through a world breaker so yeah i mean that is the upside of the deck is it's good at getting through uh people who stumble a little bit stumble on your mana miss a land drop whatever don't hit your removal spell mono white throb auras bestow whatever uh is there to punish you sweet sweet all right budget magic time actually ultra budget magic time we are playing hmm hmm mono white sram boggles <laughs> mono white auras i guess ultra budget in whatever case and i guess we keep this it's not a it's not a super powerful hand but we got threats helm of the gods is a decent pump spell with two enchantment creatures the biggest issue is our creatures are pretty fragile Elvish Mystic for our opponent. Ooh. Well, uh, play a land. Huh. How do we want to do this? I think we just Helm of the Gods, equip, attack for two. Next turn, we can All That Glitters and Cartouche. We need to grow this outside of the range of red removal, potentially. Found it. Oh. Well, if our opponent's playing Mono Green, this big lifelinker might be decent. A Danto Vanguard. Well. I mean, I think we're just going in on this hopeful Eidolon. Cartouche. Because it has lifelink, if our opponent's just going to try to race, we might actually just be able to win the race. All that glitters. That is a 9-9 a nine, nine first strike lifelink here at turn three. That is what this deck could do. Attack. Well, now I don't think our opponent can kill it, unless they have random enchantment hate in their main deck. Opponent's going to block with Elvish Mystic. We go to 31. Okay. Four is for our opponent. And you got a big green thing? Our white things are bigger than the green things. <laughs> by far. And opponent's done? Done, done, done. Turn three kill. Whoo! All right. Well. <laughs> That's what this deck could do. Um, so opponent's playing some sort of mono green deck. I think what we do is bring in possibly God's Willing and then most likely Silk Wraps. The question is, how do we make room for this? I think... We can go down the cartouches. Opponent shouldn't have edict effects. That's the main the main purpose of cartouche is to play around edicts. So we can go down the cartouches. Do we really want two gods willings? Is the other question. Why is our text different size? Do you see that? Why is one big font and one small? I moto moto. Um, maybe we can trim like. Hmm. There could be planeswalkers. The question is, what else can we cut? God's Willing does seem necessary. Maybe like one Eidolon, one Banishing Light. Try it like that, hopefully. I mean, basically what we want to do is what we did in game one, which is make a massive creature and use it to beat our opponent's face. Oh, oh, we're going to keep this. We're going to keep this. We got a Saram. Like, we need a land, but if we get this land, oh man, we get to draw a car. Oh, that's a land. That's a land. Um, uh, do we want to cast anything? I think we'll cast a shield mate. Go. We have enough cheap things to trigger SRAM that I think getting something on the board is fine. Opponent. Bark Hide Troll. Now, Cla Castle Ardenvale. And we're just going to run out SRAM. If our opponent has an answer, they have an answer. If they don't have an answer, next turn's going to be sweet, potentially. We're going to have to decide if we want to go in on SRAM. Avatar the Resolute. Sure. Opponent. Getting in, getting in. Also sure. Well, all right. Uh, play a Plains. Play Helm of the Gods, draw a card. Play, hmm. And let's just play a Danto. Pass the turn. I think we can afford to sort of take our beats for now. And then try to make a Danto into a big lifelinker. Oy, another Avatar of the Resolute. Okay. Well, we will take a bunch. And we might actually be in trouble now. Second Sram. Hmm. How can we do this? Let's hopeful idol on SRAM. Draw a card. Pass the turn. Yeah, we, we're in a fragile a fragile spot here. Opponent got off to a fast start on the play. Whoa! Another avatar. They just keep coming. Uh, we're super dead if they have aspect of the Hydra. Opponent attacks with everything. We block here. We block here. No aspect of the Hydra, please. Okay, we're at seven. So not quite dead yet. Opponent passes. Silk Wrap, get rid of Avatar of the Resolute. Silk Wrap, get rid of Avatar of the Resolute. Get in with, huh, get in with Hope Flight a lot. Pass the turn, land for our opponent. Combat, attacks. Uh, 
Yeah, let's block. Let Vanguard die. We untap. We draw planes. Well, we play a land. We play Srom. We play Griffspoo. Draw a card. Put the helm on it. Get in for six. Gain six. Oh, wow. Our opponent had a very strong mono green star, and I think we're, I think we're racing it. Triple Avatar the Resolute. An ultra budget mono white Srom. Don't care. Don't care at all. Opponent combat gets in or not. We don't care. Opponent passes. Uh, so we draw planes. We will bestow a shield mate. Draw a card. Hoo! Ethereal Arbor. Draw a card. And go to combat. Attack for 15, 15, flying first strike lifelink. And see you later, mono green. Hoo! Okay. Okay, okay. And uh, that was impressive. That wasn't like our opponent just had a, a bad draw. Their draw was very strong. They were make they made <laughs> three three for two, four three trample reach for two, five four trample reach for two, six five trample reach for two, all in a row. Like they had a very big board and got us low in life, but the little hopeful idol on that could. <laughs> well, with help from uh, from friends, able to get it done. Uh, sweet, sweet, sweet. That shows what the deck can do when it draws SRAM. Like, SRAM is the engine that makes the deck do crazy things. We can win without it, as we've seen in, uh, like, our first game. Like, sometimes we just make a huge thing and that's enough. But with SRAM, we drew six more cards than our opponent, and that was able to uh, power us through, find our silk wraps, and steal the win. Sweet, sweet. All right, budget magic time. Ultra budget magic time. We are playing some ultra budget SRAM auras. Uh, and we got SRAMs. We got SRAMs for days, which means we're going to keep this. Two SRAMs is not necessarily bad with this hand, since we have two ways to trigger it, which means we really, we really just want one to live. If one lives, life is going to be good. So we're fine with... We're fine with keeping this and just trusting that one of our SRAMs is going to draw us into what we need. The only downside of this hand is it's not very aggressive. Like, the Helm of the Gods will be powerful eventually, hopefully, uh, once we draw more enchantments. But right now, they're not doing much. Except for triggering SRAM, which I guess is kind of a lot in its own way. Opponent, Lani up to you, Forest, and Llanowar Elves. Traditional Pioneer start. Well, let's play a SRAM, Senior Edifice. Pass the turn. Uh, opponent, Rootbound Craig. Don't kill our Sram. Domri. All right, Sram lives. Wait, well, I guess I could trade Llanowar Elves. Okay, takes up for mana. That's fine. Well, now we get to draw cards and attack Domri. Oh, and kill Domri. Opponent passes. Uh, so Cartouche, draw a card. Make a dork. Ethereal Armor, draw a card. Make a dork. Kill Domri. We have a five-five. You have no Domri. <laughs> Pass the turn. Five fives are tough to kill. An opponent's done. They can't kill it. They can't kill it. And that's what this deck can do. Taking on one of the scarier decks in the format, the Landor Elves Dork deck. And we got them. We got them good. Well, uh, so in this matchup, I think we just go up Silk Wraps, go down our Cartouches and an Eidolon. Run it like that. So we have more ways to kill, like, Mana Dorks for example. These decks usually have a lot of powerful three drops, unless it's Possibility Storm and we're misreading the matchup. I'm assuming it's just like Gruel, Rabble Master, Stompy style deck. Well, that went pretty well. Like the deck is, it is powerful. It's good draws are close to unbeatable for a lot of decks. And that was a good draw. The SRAM draws are definitely the most fun, for sure. All right, we're on the draw here for game number two. And I think we keep this. It's risky because we need a land, but with a land, this hand is very powerful. Opponent Temple passes. And we have a Trailblazer, which at least can play some defense while we're waiting to draw lands. Ooh, that's a, that is a land. Well, Trailblazer, go. Four Toughness, good spot to be against Gruel. Opponent, tap land, and passes. Well, play a land, play a Danto Vanguard. I think we're going to wait till next turn to play Sram when we can Sram and trigger it right away with Helm of the Gods. So at least we'll get one card draw out of it. Stomping Grouts for our opponent. Untapped. Ooh, Death Mist Raptor. Interesting. I'll play a land. Play Sram. Play Griff's Boon. Draw a card. Go to combat. Attack, attack. Well, we will pay for to kill Death Mist Raptor. So this comes back whenever something is turned face up. So if we're can Megamorph or Morph. All right, there goes Sram. That was expected. 
And all right, so Death Mist is going to return, but we have a clock going. Uh, actually, hmm. Yeah, let's just try to kill our opponent. All that glitters. Helm of the Gods. Attack for nine. Pass the turn. Boy, this deck is powerful. For being like $40, this deck is... <laughs> I mean, as far as ultra budget decks... Yeah, opponent scoops it up. I mean, for the price tag, it's gotta be the best deck in the format. Like, if you're looking to play competitive Pioneer for under 50 bucks, this has gotta be the choice. It's gotta be. Like, we're just crushing people. Crushing. Hmm. All right, sweet, sweet. All right. Budget magic time. We are playing mono white auras. Mono white, mono white SRAM. Ultra budget, actually. I think the next like 40, 40 sub dollars. It's super cheap. Super duper cheap in Pioneer. And uh, we're going to keep this. Sadly, we don't have a SRAM, but we can go all in on this Laguna Mint Trailblazer and hope, hope and pray that we're in a matchup where it works. Fabled Passage. That's uh, probably not the best sign. Fabled Passage makes me think. Our opponent probably playing Fatal Push. Usually it's like some sort of control deck that's playing Fabled Passage for the most part. But we'll find out. Opponent cracks. Gets a forest. Okay. Green Black Seasons Past would be my guess. Ooh, Rootbound Craig. Arboreal Grazer. Sure. Oh, it's Lotus Field Storm. What? Keske. Okay. I don't know what's happening, but we will put a cartouche on our trailblazer. More lands, not the the most optimal. Go to combat, swing at you. Actually, there's, yeah, I mean, we'll swing. Opponent gets a block, or not. Yeah, opponent blocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I'm scared. <laughs> Usually you don't see someone put Cascading Cataracts into play unless something unfair is happening. Although I'm glad it's not Lotus Field. Lotus Field is the scariest land for someone to put into play in this scenario. Because then you just die. All right, opponent. What you got? We could stop drawing lands now. That would make us That would make us happy. No more lands. Opponent. Passing. Well, let's play Castle Ardenvale and put a... Uh, bestow the gift of a Nyxmorn shield mate <laughs> on our Lagona Van Trailblazer. All right, big enough to attack through an Abriel Grazer. Would you like to block opponent? They would. All right. Well, pass the turn. I mean, a green red deck should have a hard time dealing with a nine toughness creature. Although this Cascading Cataracts, who knows? Who knows? Who knows what's going on there? Opponent passing. Um, one, two, three. Hmm. So if we put all that glitters, one, two, three, four. Hmm. You know this. This is weird. Let's go all that glitters. Trailblazer up to eight power so we can hit for nine all right let's cast one hopeful eidolon this lets us hit for 10 and we still have a eidolon to put on trailblazer next turn so two turn clock all right opponent <laughs> gonna need a <laughs> i don't even know how we're gonna sideboard against this deck i'm assuming our opponent's problem is they needed more lands usually if you're playing abriel grazier you want many lands on the battlefield same for cascading cataract so Seems like our opponent might have kept a a slightly land light hand. An opponent. All right, scoops it up. Uh, bad news is I have no idea what we're uh, what we're sideboarding against. Uh, we might just like bring in nothing. Maybe one more God's willing. Maybe go. Uh, I don't know what we're. Eh, let's run it back. <laughs> I really don't know. I really don't know uh, what we're up against. I guess it could still be a weird Lotus Storm draw. Ooh, all right. Well, again, no SRAM, but Adanto Vanguard's a good creature to put things on. And a pretty fast clock on its own. Uh, opponent. Failed passage. Passes. Ooh, Helm of the Gods. Well, let's just run that out. It'll probably be helpful eventually. Opponent cracks. Gets a mountain. And more Fabled Passages. Now, opponent's doing a good job of thinning their deck. Let's Adanto Vanguard. Pass the turn. No more F6-ing or else we risk getting us shocked or something. Ooh, I, maybe this is... Hmm, okay. Maybe this is Lotus Field Storm. It definitely could be. I feel like Lotus Field Storm is a horrible matchup for us. Grazer. Breeding Pool. Okay. Opponent passes. Well, Plains. Griffspoon. Ethereal Arbor. Helm of the Gods. That's a big Adanto Vanguard on turn three. Attack for eight. Opponent takes it to 12. 
Oh, we can't quite win. Well, yeah, we can't quite win next turn. We can get rid of the Grazer and hit for nine, but that still leaves our opponent alive. Oh, God, more Grazers. Well, opponent's got plenty of chump blockers. Would be nice to, hmm, well, all right, bestow upon our Adanto Vanguard. I guess in theory our opponent could take this and go to one and then start blocking next turn. All right, eat a Grazer. I'm just worried that we're going to get comboed off. Golos? Golos makes sense with... Yeah, okay. With a Cascading Cataracts, Golos makes a lot of sense. I think this is lethal, though. I think Banishing Light on Grazer... Yeah, there's a Cataracts. I think Banishing Light on Grazer just wins us the game, right? Well, there's our Sram. Well, Banishing Light. Hit Grazer. And that Adondo Vanguard is doing what Adondo Vanguards can do. Whew! Well, that's turn five, and it could have been even faster had we drawn, <laughs> had we, <laughs> had we drawn a, had we drawn a, a, a way to get through those grazers quickly, or if our opponent hadn't had multiple flying blockers, but that is a frightening, frightening Adanto Vanguard. <laughs> not bad, not bad, not bad. Ultra budget magic time. We are playing a super duper ultra cheap version of... Mono White Auras, I guess. Mono White Bestow. Sram Bestow. I don't even know what to call it. But cheap creatures, auras, beat phase, kill opponent. Mono White, I think, is a one color that we haven't really played in Pioneer. So Mono White's time to shine in ultra budget form. That's like 40, 40 something dollars, I think. Uh, let's lead on Laguna Band Trailblazer. A good thing to target with our auras. See what our opponent's up to. Mountain. An insolent neonate. All right, so some sort of graveyardy deck, I assume. Well, play a land, play. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just all the glitters. Go to combat, attack. I think eventually we're gonna need to draw something that makes us evasive. Because if this is like a dread, well, I don't know what our opponent's playing. If they're mono red, I can't imagine they can kill Laguna Band Trailblazer. Um. Hmm. <sighs> Let's Helm of the Gods equip go to combat attack the other thing that we could do is try to like instead of making one huge creature make multiple pretty big creatures oh aurelia okay this is almost certainly a god pharaoh's gift deck well we would like to be able to make this trailblazer fly opponent passes well a land is not bad awkward 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 i guess we just have to go max damage why our opponent doesn't have a blocker get in for nine Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. Wow. We are we are a griff spoon away from just closing out this game, almost for sure. And our opponent's in permanent chump block mode unless they can kill this trailblazer. Four mana. Oh god. Iron Craig feet. Okay. Well, that is a thing that happened. <laughs> Fair enough. The bad news for our opponent is they're still gonna have to chump block. Like they get to get in twice with Aurelia. But they are still locked into chump blocking here. Oh, that is, that is bad. Actually, we're just dead, aren't we? Okay. We draw up to 12. We draw nothing. Well, go to combat attack. Wow. That is the least likely way I expected to lose, maybe ever. Opponent blocks. Do they have a creature? Combat, okay. Yeah, got us. <laughs> Woo! All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, Apostles of Purifying Light, please get in our deck. That was something. We had a good... Wow. Iron... <laughs> I, we can't even really be mad about that. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to mull the five to try to go Iron Frank... <laughs> try to go Iron Craig Feet into uh, in the God Pharaoh's Gift, then hats off to you. Uh, so bring in our graveyard hate. We'll go down, I guess, one Eidolon. Well, we even had a, a good start, too. Like, we had our opponent dead. They needed... I didn't think that card existed, honestly. I was not expecting Iron Craig Feet to be even a possibility. Well, we're not keeping six lands in our 20 land deck. Uh, this we will keep. Apostle of Purifying Light, probably our best, uh, our best sideboard card. Although it is worth mentioning that it does die to removal with our opponent playing Boros, so it's not guaranteed unless we can grow it a bit. Opponent, also mulliganing, which I assume is to be expected with our opponent's deck. It is probably a mulligan-heavy deck. Trying to assemble the, the Nutter Butters. Down to five. 
So I think that is our opponent's plan. Mulligan into Iron Fra Craig Feet God Pharaoh's Gift and hope that uh, that that's enough. Now, nope. Plains Go. Opponent. Mountain. Skirk Prospector. Now, nope. play a land. Play a Apostle of Purifying Light. Pass the turn. Opponent. Insolent Neonate. And Sacred Foundry. Gets it. Well, we will take it. A land, I guess, would be fine here. All right, we draw a land, so let's Griff's Boon, our Apostle, go attacking. I think we, uh, I kind of feel like we want to leave up mana here to, our opponent is potentially to the God Pharaoh's Gift turn. Sack, land, got, Iron Craig Feet, God Pharaoh's Gift. Opponent gets in, hits us. Come on, another land. Opponent runs out, Combat Celebrant. Now play a land, play all that glitters, and all that glitters. Now this is interesting. Four, five, six, four, five, six. Yeah. I mean, I think we try to win. Hit our opponent for nine. And if they can kill us, they can hit us for 12 with combat celebrant. If they can somehow kill us, that would be, that would be disappointing. All right, opponent. Can you kill us? Oh my God. They have got, do they, okay. Oh no. Well, that's, that's very bad news for us. Opponent gets in. Gets it. No exerting. Well, banishing light. Get rid of baffling end to get a 3-3. Three, three. And pass the turn. Uh, build it. Combat. Tax, exerts, attacks, or not. Just normal attacks. Well, we will take four for now, I think. Down to eight. Opponent. Ooh, another combat celebrant. Well, play Sram. Play Griff's Boon. And pass the turn. Still not a great spot to be in. Opponent, three mana, four mana. Oh my, seriously? Wow. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, 10% of the time it works every time. <laughs> uh, well, we got jaked out in, uh, in a unique way. So I guess hats off to our opponent. Uh, yeah. I mean, they might have been recording their Against Odds episode, and we will be the final match when it finally all comes together. Got us. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So what do we learn this week about Mono White Alter Budget? Mono White Stromoras in Pioneer, and the deck felt pretty good. We went 4-1 in one our 5 matches, and our... <laughs> One loss uh, in our last match. We got janked out hard by Iron Crate Feet God Pharaoh's Gift. So we kind of got like reverse against the odds, I think, uh, where, I don't know, uh, Born just out janked us for sure, but their deck looked interesting and it came together well in that match. So uh, finished with a four and one. And the thing about this deck, uh, I think there's two selling points for it. One is it's very good at punishing people who stumble. Things can go wrong, our stuff could get killed, but the upside of the deck is, if our opponent stumbles a little bit, misses a land drop, we saw that against Mono Green Eldrazi in our first match, opponent got up to seven mana with their ramp, they had Ugin in hand, we're pretty sure, missed that eighth land drop, and we were able to capitalize and win the game. So this deck is very good at punishing opponents who stumble even like a tiny bit, the deck will parlay that into winning the game so that is one of the biggest upsides of the deck the other big upside of the deck is it's super cheap and this is basically the non-budget build I, I don't really think there's anything expensive you need or want to add to this deck like this is it this is the ultra budget build the budget build the non-budget build all in one so at 46 dollars i think this is the kind of deck that if you can afford it, you want to just like buy and sit on your shelf for the Pioneer format. Uh, it is definitely competitive enough that you could 5-0 a league with it, win your FNM with it for 46 bucks, which is insane. It's got to be the most competitive ultra budget build in the format because 46 bucks is just unbelievably cheap. And it's so cheap that you can kind of buy this as your second deck or your third deck or your fourth deck and just have it around for when you feel like throbbing people and jacking people out with some big auras and Adato Vanguards uh, and then still have other more expensive decks if you want to as well so i feel like this because of the price tag just being so unbelievably cheap 
It's the kind of deck that I feel like almost everyone should just own for Pioneer. It's competitive. It's a great, super cheap entry into the format if you are just looking for the cheapest possible way to compete and be able to actually like win games and maybe even events. And it's a great secondary or third deck to uh, just have sitting around for when you want to do something different and you're tired of playing your more expensive normal deck. So all around, I think it's just a great budget deck for the Pioneer format and an especially great altar budget deck. I still just can't get over like how good this deck is for being under $50. It is super rare in the history of Budget Magic in any format to have ultra budget decks that are actually competitive. You can probably count on like one hand the number of times I felt like a deck that's under $50 can actually compete with the top tiers of the format. And this is one of that small group that want to have the small handful that could do it. So all around, the deck is sweet. You draw cards, you beat down, you punish people who stumble, all in a mono white shell. So that's been our budget magic for this week. Ultra budget mono white strum auras for Pioneer. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.